Hi, I'm Brandi Heflin. I'm a personalized physics instructor and I help high school and college students feel confident and successful in learning physics. I received a request for help from a student in an electrical engineering class for a problem involving the equivalent resistance of a circuit when one wire goes over another wire without connecting to it and yet another wire appears to short out part of the circuit. I had to dig to find some information that would help me solve the problem and I realized I could use a tool I already teach my students to help explain. So here we go. In general, to find equivalent resistance of a resistor network, we want to reduce a complicated configuration of resistors to a simpler arrangement of only series and parallel combinations. To do that, we need to look at the nodes where the wires meet to determine which, if any, are actually parallel connections. Recall that the definition of a parallel connection is one where the branches share the same voltage difference between their ends. And a useful tool for examining electrical connections in a circuit is to use color coding based on voltage differences. It isn't quantitative, but it can give an overall sense of voltage rises and drops across circuit elements and entire branches. So here's how we're gonna do this. All conductors connected to the positive terminal of the battery will be colored red. All conductors connected to the negative terminal of the battery will be colored blue. All conductors connected together will be colored the same color. And then as we go around the circuit, the other rainbow colors are used to fill in the voltage drops across circuit elements qualitatively. Like crossing one element can mean one change in color, which would be red to orange, for example, or yellow to green. A change of two or more colors can be used to indicate a big voltage drop across a larger resistor. For example, we could code red to yellow, orange to green for a, a two-step change, or we could do red to green or orange to blue for a three-step change. We can, of course, also color red all the way down to blue if need be. And we can also use indigo and violet if we need more steps than just the five that we have here with the negative battery terminal becoming violet in that case. So here's the circuit in question. I want to highlight for you this area right here. That little hump in the wire indicates that there's not an electrical connection there between the wire that traverses down the circuit at D and across the circuit and connects at G. And so one of the things I wanna point out for you here is that as we follow our path around the circuit, sorry, having some mouse trouble here, as we follow a path around the circuit, we're gonna notice we have the ability to split our path here and here. But since there are no circuit elements in this middle piece, that basically means, let me finish writing really quickly before I keep talking, since there are no circuit elements, that means this point up here where we had a split effectively becomes another point D, just like point D down here. They're gonna be at the same potential. And likewise, as I come across um, this top area, you know, we're gonna keep following our path this way, follow here, I have the ability to split and my, my current would have a path down through that 10 ohms or headed back to the left at point G. And just like with point D, we have no circuit elements along here either. So, oops, let me clean up my writing just a little bit. We have no circuit elements here in the middle along this path either. So that means we basically end up with this point over here on the left is another point G. And so what we see is D to D is gonna be the same voltage, which means we will end up coloring it the same color on our next slide. And then likewise, G 
to G is going to be the same voltage. Because again, what we want to look at is what points in the circuit are actually at the same voltage, because then when we can find the same voltage differences, then uh, we know that it's a parallel connection. So here we go with our color coding. Remember, the first thing we're going to do is any wire that we would be connected to a positive terminal of the battery, we're going to make red. Let's just assume that A is going to be connected to our positive terminal. So this whole wire connected to A will color red. And at the other end, let's assume that B was connected to the negative terminal of the battery. So this wire here will color blue. So now, as we go back to our red wire, we're going to cross that 2 ohm resistor. We've got a circuit element. There's going to be a voltage drop. So I'm just going to pick orange. Again, it's a qualitative tool, not quantitative. So every wire in between the 2 ohms and the next circuit element, the 15 ohms, is going to be at the same voltage, and we're going to let that voltage be represented with orange. So notice now this wire that comes down our circuit to D, because of course, as we learned in our last slide, this point up here is effectively another D. This point over here is a G. Let me label that quickly. So now we see that this bottom wire between the 30 ohms and the 40 ohms is also going to be at that same voltage level as the D that's between the 2 and the 15 ohms and that wire that cuts between. So we don't have to know quantitatively what that value is. All we have to know is those are going to be at the same potential, the same voltage. Now let's go back over to um, that 8 ohms and working our way upward from the negative terminal of the battery, well, our assumed negative terminal, and as we come back up, we'll have a voltage rise for the direction we're going now across that 8 ohms. So we'll let this wire be green. And then we notice, oh, hey, this whole conductor, the one with the hump that doesn't connect in the middle, that one's going to be at the same potential. So we'll cut all the way across over to G. And then that means the wire here between the 10 and the 10 is going to be at that same potential as well. And so what I want to highlight for you here is that, let me grab a good color, is that we have a D to G connection this way. We have a D to G connection this way. And we have a D to G connection this way. So what this tells me is there is some other way that we can draw the circuit to show those three D to G connections. So give me just a moment to finish that. And now let's go ahead and redraw this. So here's what we can do. We can label our point A. And then somewhere over here will be our point B. We know our stops along the way include a point D somewhere after uh, point A and that 2 ohm resistor. And somewhere before we get to point D, or sorry, point B, we have a point G. So now we can go and fill things in. I just want to clean up those dots. Got a little bit sloppy with my stylus there. So in between A and D, we have a 2 ohm resistor. And in between B and G, we have that 8 ohm resistor. And now it doesn't matter which one we draw first, but we know we have three different routes to get from whatever potential is at D, represented with orange, to 
whatever potential, whatever voltage is represented by G with the green. So since I come to the 15 and the 10 first, I will just draw in that pair. And then we can draw in parallel to that another D to G connection. We can do the 40 and the 10 next. Didn't leave quite enough space to draw there. Oops. And then we can also, let me actually move my D and my G out of the way um, because I'm going to need a little bit more space there as well. D, G. And then I can draw the 30 and the 20 last as my last possible route that takes me from a point D, in other words, a place in the circuit that is at whatever voltage level that is, to a G, whatever voltage level that is. You know, especially in this problem, because we don't have a battery, we don't actually know um, specific values. But again, it's a qualitative tool. So notice that what we basically have is two ohms in, uh, in series with a parallel network with three branches, and then that is further in series with eight ohms. So now we can really easily reduce this. Each of those parallel branches has a series pair of resistors. So we can get the equivalent resistance of each of those three branches. And then we can add those to the two and the eight in series. All right, so here we go with the redrawing one more time. We had our point A with two ohms that took us over to point D. And then the top branch that we drew had a 40 and a 10, which is of course an equivalent resistance in that branch of 50 ohms. And then we also had a 15 and a 10. That's actually not drawn that well. Let me clean that up just a little bit. So we net then have an equivalent resistance from that series pair within that branch of 25 ohms. And then last, last but not least, we had a 30 and a 20 that then becomes a 50 ohm branch. And so that takes us to our point G. And then after that, we had our eight ohms that takes us over to point B. So our total equivalent resistance for this circuit is going to be the resistance from the two ohms and the resistance of the parallel connection added to that and then the resistance of the eight ohms because we've got two resistors in series with a parallel network. So let's find that uh, parallel network resistance. We're going to remember that um, one over the equivalent resistance in parallel is equal to one over each of the individual resistances. And, um, or maybe I should label them branches A, B, and C, just not to be confusing with um, R2 that I use to mean the uh, resistance of the two ohm resistor. And so the way I like to write this instead is I'm going to take the inverse of each of these added as its own reciprocal. So I like to write it like this. And that also makes it a little bit easier to put it into a calculator. So I'm going to take the inverse of 1 over 50 plus 1 over 25 plus 1 over 50. And then I get for that 
25 halves, which is uh, 12 and a half ohms. So now, easy peasy, we can come up here and let me grab that blue instead because it's kind of nice. We now have our two ohms in series with our parallel network that had a resistance of 12 and a half ohms in series with eight ohms and we get an equivalent resistance of 22 and a half ohms for this network. So even though this particular problem given did have that interesting little hump in the middle where there was no connection, all that we want to do is apply that problem solving method of looking to see where we can redraw the electrical connections by figuring out what's in series, what's in parallel, and simplifying the drawing. And then we can use color coding as a tool to help us figure out our parallel connections. So thank you for tuning in today. If you found this video helpful and you would like to place your own request, you can email me at physicsproblemrequests at gmail.com and I will select no more than one a week a problem to record a solution to and put on my YouTube channel. If you would like assistance via email, I offer that on a limited basis, up to 10 questions per academic year. You can reach me at freephysicshelpline at gmail.com. If you want to learn more about all of my tutoring services, you can email me at brandyhefflinphysics at gmail.com. You can find me online at virtualphysicsofficehours.com or you can find me on Facebook. I'm Physics Tutor Brandy. So thank you for joining me today. I love physics and I love helping you. I can't wait to see you in session soon.